So we've got another console in here for repair. This one's just from Discord. And this is because it makes really a perfect example video of how to repair traces. Uh, I've done another video on repairing um, a trace on a GBA. But this one's a bit more involved and it's a perfect way to try and describe to you guys how to repair pretty much any ripped trace. So we just take a look at the note first. Obviously spoke with you on Discord uh, and asked to send in this board for a YouTube repair as I did. And we're just going to take a look at the tools we'll need to do this repair. You can do it with less, but generally these are the tools I'd use. So for sure, one thing we're going to need is an actual new button because this doesn't have a power switch on. So we need a new power switch. Uh, I'm just going to use a DS power switch that we sell. And in order to repair the damaged traces here, you really want to expose fresh copper and cut traces and scrape things. So for that, we're going to want ideally a PCB grinder, which is basically just a small tool that can grind away at the circuit board. We also need a scalpel, which can replace the grinder tool. If you don't have a grinder tool, you can just use a scalpel. We're going to need some enamel wire. So I've got 0.2 enamel wire here, and that will be for repairing where the traces are ripped. You don't really want to be using thicker wire like Kynar wire, because when you move those wires, you can tear traces on boards. Enamel wire is that thin and flexible that it will never tear the trace on the board. This is coated in varnish effectively. So even though it looks like it's bare copper, this isn't. This isn't conductive wrapped around here. It's got a varnish on uh, insulating it. So we have to scrape away that varnish. And finally, um, a set of tweezers. So that's all we really need to begin the repair. So with that in mind, before we jump into repairing this, the idea here is to explain to you how to figure out where to repair the pads. So if this happens on another board in another location, you can reference this video and understand how to actually repair the board. So let's just set these tools aside for a moment. And let's just explain a bit about the damage here and how we're going to repair it. So we'll first start by inspecting this damage and trying to figure out what we're looking at. So if we were to look right here at the damage, you can't really see much right now because there's, um, there's green acid, there's pads torn, there's traces lifted. So ideally you want either a working console to compare to or you want schematics that show the board trace. So I've got both. So I've got another board here. And you can see when you look at the board side by side, the problem you'll often have is all these pads and things that are ripped are hidden by the component on the working board. So some we can figure out, like this pin one, you can kind of see the traces here, goes up, and then it gets ripped and messed here. And on the working board, it's just a solid trace that goes up and around but it's not the clearest way of doing things. Luckily, if you just go to retro6.wiki, you will find in the Game Boy Color section, I've got board scans. I've done this for many consoles. Uh, and as well as my site, if you go to syf.nl, you'll also have some good board scans for Game Gear uh, from Math, which we will come back to shortly. But as you can see here now, we've got a clear view of this board. So if you want to scroll on this website, it's not very intuitive, but go to the far right and you can scroll down here up and down and then if you go in the center piece of the actual image you can scroll in and drag it around so the main issue with the site is most people are not sure how to scroll the image you just go to the very edge there and then you've got a digital zoom here which is useful so now we've got a really clear view there of the switch and if we overlay that against our actual board here and say turn it the same orientation we've got a nice easy view to see what's going on so we can see this trace here clearly should have a pad here and the solder for the switch when we actually put the switch on would need to make contact with this pin on the new switch so ultimately this pin on the switch wants to join to a pad that's missing here so i guess we should really start with that if we just overlay this on the board you can see the issue the pad for this pin is missing the pad for the middle two pins are both missing the pad for the bottom pins missing the pad down here is missing. So the goal of this is to repair wherever electrically these pads used to go. That's all we're trying to do. So if we looked on this image, we are trying to repair where these four pads go, plus this one here. And in order to identify that, you kind of need to understand what you're looking at on the circuit board. So this image overall, most of them look the same. You'll tend to have a circuit board that has white ink or some kind of ink and we call this the silk screen because that's how they basically get the emulsion ink onto the board. They're using a silk screen technique. So this is normally called the silk screen layer. 
And it just means it's basically the paint on top of the board, like the normal paint that you would write with. So you'd, you'd put your identifiers on your text, on your symbols on. That's the very top of the circuit board. The next layer down is an electrical insulation layer that's typically green. And in this case, you can see here, this light green covering everything is the insulation layer. Below that is then a copper layer, which you can see coming through these holes here or exposed here as solder that's already been put on top of the copper. Below that is what this dark green area looks like, which is called the prepreg, which is basically the dielectric between the top and bottom layers of copper, just basically an insulator so that the bottom layer of copper on your board, you know, the copper down here, isn't just directly shorted to all the copper on here. And then on the bottom side of the board, it's exactly the same again. It's a, it's a copper layer, a solder resist layer, which is this green layer that insulates, and then the silk screen. If we just take a look at the four layer PCB here, you can see the prepreg, this board in the middle. So if we were to look at the Game Boy Color circuit board, you can see all this fiberglassy material here, this white powder in the middle. That's the prepreg. That's insulating the top and bottom layers, which you can also see. So you see this layer here, this dark green layer there. That is going to be prepreg here, then a thin layer of copper between the two. Then you'll have the green solder resist there that you can see and then you'll have your ink on top so it should be fairly clear to see it basically goes white ink and then solder resist which is the light green typically color that insulates the copper from the surface of the material and where you don't have that protective solder resist you can see the copper is exposed directly so this one is copper and right underneath that is this prepreg for the places that do have the ink, you can see the coppers here, and then the ink is sitting on top and masks the trace. So see how this trace has gone from gold to like a dark brown? That's because it's gone from gold to having the solder resist sitting on top of it. And then on top of that, you've got the white ink. So it's just built up of layers that you have to understand. And it goes white ink, solder resist, copper itself, prepreg board. And then that goes through the prepreg board and the bottom side then repeats this. So in fact, here's a little easier view to see instead of four layer for now. Here's the fiberglass board in between. Then you have your copper layer. Then you have the solder resist, that green bit. And then on top of this that they don't typically show is your silk screen. So this is where the white ink sits on top. You can see you can have single layer PCBs that simply don't have copper on the bottom. And then just to exaggerate that point, save us scraping boards away. If you go to syf.nl and take a look at the repair resources and go to VA0, you'll see here, here's the game gear. This is the board as it is on the top. This is when all of the white silk screen and the green solder resist, so the top two layers, have been sanded away. And now all you're seeing is the bare copper stuck to the prepreg. So what you're seeing there is this bare copper layer and this substrate. If you then sand down further, you can see this is a multi-layer board. So this is now an inner core to the PCB. So if you went to the four-layer stack, you can see we've sanded away the green solder resist and the white silk screen. We've sanded away this top copper layer here. We've also sanded away this prepreg white layer, which is just like the middle layer, just a bit thinner typically. And this white layer is then revealed underneath this secondary layer of copper which is what you're seeing here. Sand that down further, remove that copper plus the prepreg that's between that copper and the next copper. So we've sanded away then effectively the middle main prepreg board and the copper that we just saw. And we're now revealing this next layer of copper here. So the third layer down, and that's what this is. And then the other side of the board has simply been flipped over and sanded because if we sanded any more away, if we sanded, say, this copper and this prepreg, you're only left with a slither of copper, so the board would fall apart. So instead, the board got flipped over, and the green on the bottom of there got sanded away to reveal the bottom layer of copper. So it might seem a bit complicated at first, but if you get used to thinking of this layer, what you can see, you'll understand how these circuit boards work. So if we just put some of that knowledge into practice now, you'll find out this is quite easy to do. So the first thing I want to do is clean up all this mess around the circuit. So I'm just going to get my grinder pen and clear away all of the battery acid or whatever this corrosion is here. 
and you don't want to be working with any mesh. You want to clearly see what's going on. I'm not pressing hard here. I'm just lightly scraping away. And it's important to do this because if there are any weak traces that you're trying to preserve, you don't want to be doing that. You need strong traces to join to. So don't be afraid and try to not scrape away the damage. Otherwise, you're not going to do a good repair job. So just get rid of any weakness on the board. And if you don't have a grinding pen, then, for example, here, you can just gently scrape away with a scalpel, which is a bit more work, but you can sort of do that. Just get some IPA and clean up that area of all the dust and debris. I'm just going to cut off this loose uh, trace in a moment, but let me just explain because it's a good point to show you what's going on. So as you can see here in the mini to the layers we have, let's just do a, an example. So you have the top layer of white ink, this on off, for example, and we can scrape that away. You can see as the white comes off, after the white, if you're careful like that, there's still this green layer underneath. So we've just scraped off the silk screen top layer. If you scrape through that further, so you remove the solder resist layer, you'll see the copper underneath. So if you scrape that corner, you can see we're revealing the copper. And you can see the copper follows the same shape as this light green. And where it's dark, there simply isn't copper. It's just the prepreg board below. So when you see like light green and dark green, all you're looking at is the places where there is copper and isn't copper. And then on top of the copper is the solder resist. So we just scraped away the white layer, then the insulation layer, there's the copper layer. And if we were to scrape away that copper layer, we would be left with exactly this. So exactly where the trace is ripped. So what's come off here is the top layer, the copper, and then you're looking at the prepreg there. That's the insulation layer between the top and bottom. And here's the trace that's just glued down. So this copper is simply glued to this prepreg. So when you tear a trace or pull a trace up like this, you're pulling away the glue that's gluing this copper. You can see it's literally a copper trace here. So this has been pulled up and ripped off the prepreg. And on top of this trace that has been removed, you've still got your solder resist. So you could scrape away that, for example, to expose the copper that is on that layer. So you can see right there, that's the copper. So that bit we've torn up there is the copper that makes the electrical connection. And that's going off to where it wants to go, which is this resistor. So it originally was glued down, came across, went here and went to a pad, which is just copper like this that's vanished, and it's disappeared. Now it also went across and to this via. Now a via, which is important to figure out when it goes from top to bottom of a board, and again, just bear this in mind for two layer boards for now, this copper would have come along here, been soldered to the switch here, but as well as that, so it's going off to the right and going over to this resistor, it also goes to the left, and you can see because there's missing pad here, you can clearly see where copper was, and goes to this circle with a hole in. This is called a via, and what this is, the copper comes along, if we look at a healthy via, say this one here, the copper comes along, is still connected in a ring, but then there's a hole that goes through the board, comes out the other side, so we were to flip that over, and then has a ring and carries on. So for example, I think it would have been this one, we can easily track that after, but that ring then carries on, and now you've got copper on the other side of the board going somewhere else. So once you've torn a pad, you want to understand where this pad used to go. So start at the place where it should be, we're trying to solder here, and make sure that you repair both places that this copper used to go. You can't just repair one and solder to this trace because it's going two places. So let's say, for example, this trace tore here, or there was a cut through this line. You can clearly see it just go left and right, and there's nowhere else to try and repair. If it had cut through this hole and this entire hole was missing, you'd have to basically say, right, this hole, trace it to the other side of the board, which a little technique is if you get your enamel wire super thin, and let's say we wanted to trace this hole, you can usually just place the enamel wire through, 
and you can see it comes through the board. So the center of the hole is hollow, but the inner ring, so the inner side in the hole is still copper. And if you take a look at this image, that's what this kind of copper line is representing here. There's the hole in the middle, there's the copper ring, and then it's still joined like that all the way down to the bottom. So it forms a path from the top to bottom. So if this hole was missing completely, which is the case here, because it's not going anywhere, I wouldn't trust that hole because it looks very damaged. I'd class that hole as non-existent now. We would need to repair to the other side of the board. So the goal is first to find out where all of the pads should be by placing, say, the switch on and looking at where they would have been. So you can see we had a pad here. We had a pad here, a pad here, and a pad here, and a pad here. And we want to expand out from that spot to where it should be going. So if we take a look at the board scan, it's nice and easy to see. We have this pad here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Well, this pad wants to just go here. So you see the light green, and there's three vias here. So we've got plenty of redundancy if one got broken. So all we need to do for that is make sure the physical switch here joins to this pad here. Number two is interesting. If you look at number two, it doesn't go anywhere. So see how it's just surrounded by a dark island of just green. The copper is light green in this case. So this number two actually isn't connected anywhere. This was just a piece of copper stuck to the prepreg, but it doesn't actually go anywhere else. You would have seen a via either in the center of here or going off to the other side of the board and it goes nowhere. So number two, we don't actually care about. It doesn't do anything. So we need to repair number three to here. And then we've got C. And again, C, you can see, is all dark green around here. And it's just this little island here. It's not this via, because see this dark line between it separating the two. It's just this green island. So similar to number three, we just need to repair to this green island and make sure that these two vias are intact. So if we look at our board, all we need to do is solder a wire to this area and leave the lead coming out here to solder to the switch. Number two, we don't care about, so there's nothing there. Number three, we have quite a mangled mess here, but we can see there's the island. However, this I don't really see here. So this on our board looks like it's a different version slightly than our scan. It's not the exact same image. We can see with our own eyes that there is nothing there but white silk screen and then the prepreg. So if we just move this, trace up and out the way. You can quite see, clearly see there's no copper here, there's just this island. So we're safe to presume that C, that used to be here, is just connected to this island of vias here. And there's plenty of strength in these, there's two vias, so we can just simply solder a wire from here to the switch. Let's tackle this one first, because this is a bit easier. We can see again, this one has copper here, so see the square where we want to solder to. Now it has a ring of dark around here, if you look closely, it doesn't actually have a break here. So see how it goes light green, which means this copper is joined to this light green area here. There's also a scoop out here. So a light green here. So we know this pad is connected to here. But this is all ripped. So if these two pads are ripped. This island now here, which may be important, is no longer connected to the islands over here where the other connection is made. So you can see this pad here is actually joining this area to all the rest of this area. The pad on here is completely gone, meaning that this island here of copper now is completely separated from this island of copper. So not only do we need to solder the switch to this pad, we also need to rejoin these two islands. Otherwise, wherever this copper goes, all the way up here and all the way to other things and ground here may not be connected. Now, using your eye, you can kind of see that this copper goes up around through here, around here, which is this, which comes down, which is this. So it's just a circle. So it's technically joined and therefore doesn't need to be rejoined. But let's say we wanted to prove that. If we just scrape away a little bit of the copper there, get your multimeters in continuity mode, touch on that pad, touch on that pad. And you can see we get a beep, so we know that's joined. So we only need to repair the switch in order for it to attach to either one of these pads. It doesn't really matter. And the final one, this is the trickier one. Still not difficult, but it's more involved because it involves two places to repair to. 
I'm just going to get rid of that floating copper now. So we need to repair this trace to firstly here, which is easy, but you can see it went around here, up to here, and it's this trace here. So we can just solder a wire to that. But it also went under here through this hole. And if we use the little enamel wire trick, we can just place the wire through the hole, turn the board around, and you can see it went to this via here. So then let's take a look at where that via goes. And from what I can see with my eyes, it's hard to see because there's white ink over here, but I'd say it's possibly joined to this area here. So again, if you're not sure, multimeter in continuity mode, touch on the exposed gold there, just make sure you've got a good connection. Touch on here, and no, doesn't appear to be connected. So what this might be, and it's often in assembly and manufacture, is this might be a test point. So when they come to test these boards function, see all these circles and dots exposed all over the board? This is normally so pins can go down and make contact with all of these pads at one point. Basically a test jig would come in with loads of pins, come down and touch on all of these, and power the entire console and get feedback from the pins to make sure things are working. So that's likely just a test pad that doesn't actually go anywhere this side of the board. To try and double check that, let's just look at the other side of the board. So if we just close down this image, scroll down to the other side, and I've mirrored these so that it stays on the same side of the screen, but if you wanted to bounce between, and this is this circle here, and if we get as close as we can, you can see there's a dark ring of green around here. If you really wanted to see clear, you can get the full size image. You don't have to work on this low res. If you scroll up, there's a link to say, get the full size images here. Takes you to the GitHub, go to the color scans, go to say the front, which we're on, the front full size, so not front small, download. And this is a huge 3200 DPI image that I've scanned. And you can zoom right in and see with absolute confidence that that is clearly dark green and it doesn't go anywhere. So what looked originally potentially a problem, making contact with this via, we don't have to bother with. If you wanted to, to keep the test point intact, then we'd have to solder a wire from the new place. So say from here, once we've got the switch in, solder a wire around and literally solder it to the actual pad here. But the pad literally is that, it goes nowhere. So there's not really much point in doing that. So that's all the long talk and theory out the way to hopefully explain to you how to find out what you need to do when you have a kind of mess of a circuit board and you need to understand how to make the connections. Making these connections now is the last step that takes minutes. So with what we know, let's plan what we're gonna do and do it. So let's just begin the repair by exposing everything we need to connect to. So we're gonna need to expose both sides of this copper island here because I'm going to make a bridge between these two places that's nice and strong because this is going to physically hold the button in place so you want this to be nice and strong. I'm going to expose this trace that's solid here stuck down still for the bottom switch. I'm going to expose this island trying to stay away from the via because you don't want to effectively cut away the via otherwise you're going to break it through the board. And then we'd have to repair to the other side. So just go gentle around the via hole. This one is already exposed. Just clean up to be sure. This one's already got solder on. So I think that's all the exposing we need to do. Clean off all the copper. And the only other thing we have to bear in mind, we have all this exposed copper. Now, when we're going to put this down, notice that these pins are going underneath. So if we were to solder this, and this is upside down, so not fully in the right orientation, but you can imagine if we soldered the switch here and this metal tab came in, it could short to this exposed pad here, say for example, on this one. So you generally, once you've exposed copper, and if you're not going to use this area, you want to re-insulate that area. So you can use electrical tape if you don't have anything to hand. You can use... 
capped on tape, which we also sell. We sell all of these things in our store, by the way, so you can get every single tool, switch, wire, and everything that you need there. Capped on tape is the next thing. It's basically an electrically insulative layer of polyamide, I believe it is. You can see it's this yellowy tape. So you'll see this often covering things like LCDs. When you have the back of an LCD panel, you'll normally see this tape on it. So this is just electrically insulating. So we could cover the areas that we don't want to see with this tape underneath. Or if you have some, and this is something we're still trying to stock at the minute just because of being able to ship this, uh, this is effectively the green layer that covers the copper. So UV curable solder mask. And obviously the Chinese have spelt this mast by mistake, but that should be mask. So you want some of this solder mask to effectively remake the exact same cover that we had originally before we scraped it off. Again, don't worry if you don't have this, just use tape or some covering. But you will need to cover what's underneath the switch in case you make electrical contact, which would then short things out. So to use this, just get a clean cotton wool bud, squeeze the tiniest amount out, you won't need much at all for this, onto the end of cotton wool bud. And then inside the area we're not soldering, so pretty much just here, you want to just dab a little bit of green. And you can see this is literally the same kind of mask that is originally on the board. Once that's on, I can just use my tweezers if I like to cover. And you want to just make sure where there's exposed copper that you don't want it to be exposed. Basically under the switch is all now covered. You don't want to cover these exposed parts because that's what we purposely exposed. But we do want to cover the parts that are exposed that we didn't want. Once you've done that, you want UV light. So if you, again, we sell UV light. We have UV light torches. If you just go to our website and scroll to equipment, soldering and rework, you can find the Kapton tape, the enamel wire. If you go back and go to diagnostics and bench, you'll find the fast curing lamp here if you want UV. If you don't have a UV torch, however, and this takes about a minute to cure, you can always just use heat. So you can use a heat gun, a hair dryer, or you could even just get your soldering iron close to the green to add some radial heat as a last resort. But ideally you want, say, a hot air gun to finish the job and just apply some hot air to dry out the solder mask. And this isn't as good as the original layer because this is just really a repair job. So you'll find if you poke that with tweezers and scrape away, you'll be able to get under that. But generally, as a layer, you can see it's nice and solid. And if you don't go poking and scraping with sharp implements, you can now happily set your switch on this, apply heat, and it stays in place. So now we've got a nice insulative cover where our switch wants to be. And we don't have to be worried about the exposed copper underneath making contact. So I'm going to start with the physical mount first. And we've got a nice pad here ready to go. I'm just going to apply some fresh solder to that pad because this is the original solder. Just want to make sure that's uh, nice and clean and put a bit of flux on. And the first solder is always the trickiest because nothing's held down or secured. And you want to get this switch in the best position possible. So I'd say right there looks like the original position. And I've just gently tapped that in. And you can see it's just held the switch in place. So the next thing we want to do is secure the other side of the switch, because this will be very movable at the minute. You can see it's just held on by a tiny bit of solder there. So to do that, we want to bridge these two areas, make a solid pad here to be able to then solder to the shield. A nice technique for that is to get some solder wick or copper tape, whichever you have at handy. Got a piece off there. And the idea will be, is to solder it between these two places. And the reason for that is solder wick will absorb all the solder and be very firm and rigid and make a hard kind of bridge. But you can see first, let's just soak this in solder so it becomes rigid. So this is doing what it's designed to do, which is to literally absorb solder. And now what we have is a pretty hard piece of copper covered in solder. Just clean my desk off 
of the flux. And now if we take this and look here, we want it to be about the right size. So we'll trim it down to about here. And now we just need to trim because this copper here on the other trace will end up getting shorted if we go straight over. We want to trim the angle a little bit as well, like a diagonal. So I'll just take a diagonal piece off. And you can do the same thing with copper tape as well if you don't want to use um, solder wick. But anyway, we want to repair a trace. You can see there now we've got a great little fit. So that was nice and easy. So to attach this, just pre-tin both sides. And just be careful when you're applying fresh solder to things. You don't go touching, you know, like your iron touches those parts. So just be mindful of where you're putting your iron when you're repairing things. Now with those two on, what always helps is a little bit of flux. Just on the area. Take your little solder wick bridge. Get it roughly in place. And just warm up. And then you can push down with tweezers. And now you have an absolutely rock solid connection. If we clean off all the flux to get a good view. What we want to make sure is we are not shorting to this trace here. So you know how to test for that now. You get your multimeter in continuity mode. And let's just make sure before we go further. That we don't have a short to this pad here. And you can see we don't. So there's no short between there. Obviously, if we touch here, we do. But touching on this trace and the hole, we don't have a short. So now we can solder the shield to this new solid track that we've made. And to do that, I apply the solder to the shield first and then drag down, just so this doesn't all move when we reflow solder. You can see that's now got the switch nice and solid. So that switch isn't going anywhere there at all. It's rock solid. We can go back to the other side now, it's secured in place, and just put a little bit of extra solder on, just to make sure we've got a nice connection. So that switch now is physically in the original position, and it's nice and strong. As this is the DS light switch, let's just remove that original spring. And now we have a few more steps left. We want to solder pin three to pin three, which should be as easy as just applying the solder to the board and then going up to the pad and adding a touch more solder until they bridge over like that. If it was too far away, that's where this enamel wire comes in. You can just solder enamel wire to the switch and then over to wherever it needs to go, which you'll see in a moment. But if the gap isn't too far, you can make a nice little join like that. Pin two we don't care about, and they can also join because they don't go anywhere. It's a center pad. So don't worry if these two pads join. But the goal here, and this is where we'll probably see we want a little bit of wire, is you want that pad to join to these two. And you can see it's quite far away. So let's just see what happens if we add the solder. And you can see it's really too much to make that kind of jump. So for that, we're going to use enamel wire to bridge the gap. Now this enamel wire has a coating, as I mentioned, so this isn't electrically conductive at the minute. We have to strip away that insulation. And to do that, if you just get some solder on your tip of your iron, nice blob, just insert the wire into the solder and just remove after a few seconds. And you can see now it's tinned with solder. And you can actually see the burn as well, this little coiled up burn there, that's the enamel rolling back. So now we have an exposed end where only this bit is conductive and it, you won't be able to get continuity to this wire. You're going to have to re-expose the other end. So just think of the gold colour, the copper colour, as the blue on Kynor wire. It's insulation. It's only exposed where it's showing. Then take your exposed end of wire probably use a bit of flux for this if you want hold it over the wire like that and solder to the pin now it's hard to see on there but that's soldered to the actual pin of the switch so there's a bit more depth on it you can see it's it's on the pin but not down to here yet underneath 
And this is really close, so I'll just leave the wire all in one piece for now. And all I'll do is place it over where I want it to solder to, add some extra solder, and we've got to burn through that insulation first before this will solder down. So we hold down and wait. See it's come off there, but we don't mind for now. Keep going. And there you can see we've now burnt off the insulation and stuck down this wire. And let's just remake sure it's connected to the switch as well. So you can see it's not at the minute. It's moved away when we've warmed up to so this wire. It's currently floating. And just a quick blob of fresh solder attaches that to there. So now we have the switch leg itself here is soldered with enamel wire going to the original trace here, which we wanted. So we now have our slightly different island here, which is sort of showing here. We've soldered from there to the switch. So you can see it's gone from there to the switch. And clean up the area a bit midway as well. Just try and keep everything clean so we can visually see what we're doing. And now we need to remove this excess wire that's still attached to the rest of the wire. And with this being enamel wire, this is the benefit that I mentioned. Because it's so thin, you can just grab it with your tweezers and just go in a circle a few times. And it won't rip the trace. It will simply snap the wire. And it'll snap it at the exact weak point, which is where the solder finishes. So the only thing left for the power switch now is to reconnect this trace here. Now, the only thing you have to bear in mind when you're using um, thin wire, so this is 0.2 wire, is the current load capabilities. This is a power switch, and normally, in modern design, the power switch doesn't take the current. But in the old things like the Game Boy Color, this does actually pass the current through. So this wire will be experiencing whatever current passes through this switch. Now, on a regular Game Boy, that's 50 milliamps, which is nothing. If you're using, say, an IPS screen, an amp, and a fully modded kit, you can do all the calculations you want. You can look online, you can have debates. Simplest way of doing it, is to take a bench multimeter, expose two ends of this wire, pass half an amp through it, and leave it for half an hour. Use a thermal camera or your hand to touch the wire and measure the heat and see if it's capable of withstanding the temperature. Obviously, the official docs will give you many different statements. Some will say 0.2 milliamp wire carries 10 milliamps. Some will say 2 amps. It all depends on if it's open air, if it's carrying certain types of signal. There's a lot involved. And you can see if you just type in AWG, which is American Wire Gauge, to current, you'll get to the top website, which is this power stream. Scroll down, you've got American Wire Gauge size, or you've got conductor diameter. I'm currently using 0.2 millimeter conductor, roughly. It's a American Wire Gauge 30. So you can see here, American Wire Gauge 30. Go across, and it carries 0.86 amps in the wire, that's the maximum recommended amperage. Even if you go to American Wire Gauge 32, it can carry half an amp. And that's also completely safe in a chassis with bundled wires, which is your least amount of current possible because it's bundled with other wires. So you've got more than enough current capabilities there on paper as well. But overall, if you're not sure, use thicker wire, or if you're not confident, use thicker wire. I'm confident this is thick enough, and that's what we're going with. So those are pre-tinned. I'm just going to expose the end off this wire, like so. I'm going to do it on the switch first. You just have to hover over the switch. Tack on, and you can see that's nice and strong. It's on there, and I'll just generally, for neatness, Try and follow the original shape of the trace. Just looks nicer than being in a random place. Push down with them tweezers, go along. And you can see roughly there's the shape. Just remember this enamel wire is still insulated, so this has got an insulator on that we need to burn through. So we just apply a bit of extra solder to the iron, hover over the wire a little bit to remove the insulation. And then after a few seconds, you can see it's now removed the insulation off the wire, so it's gone all tinned. And we can now just tack it in place, like so. If you want to just clean the shape of that solder up, you can see how it's a little bit spiky. There's a little bit of a dry joint. Simply apply a little bit of flux. 
hold down with your tweezers near where it is and just dab on and you can see it flows and reshapes the solder into a nice bubble same again just take the enamel wire grab here spin in circles and there's the wire removed one last clean up with IPA so let's just check this works turn the switch off go on my multimeter go on my bench with the grips and turn over these grips are not the best for this turn on and you can see there console now boots turns off turns on so that's another repair done I know it was in depth, but the main thing I wanted to cover was showing you guys not just how to repair specifically a Game Boy Color power switch. I wanted you to understand how you can look at a board that's ripped anywhere and trace how you need to repair the circuit. I've used various techniques, so you can use braided wire, copper tape, or anything else you like to make you know, bridges of major areas that are removed. We could have repaired these pads with actual copper tape similar. So instead of just wire, we could have stuck copper tape down like this and then soldered to the copper tape. Uh, it's all preference and how you want to repair. But the ultimate goal is to simply restore electrical connections to all the points that were missing to where they go to. One last finishing touch on this is you can, if you want to go that extra mile, blob your solder resist over all the areas that are exposed still. And you can see when it's fully covered, people might argue that looks messier than leaving it exposed and looking like a clean, nice looking job. It depends whether you want to insulate the electrical connections or leave them exposed, but looking nicer. Really doesn't matter too much in this instance. It is just preference of the person. But hopefully you guys learned something there and I hope this helps you repair more retro consoles. And especially then if you get issues on our Discord of ripped traces, I can direct you to this video to help you repair most traces and not just a single instance of a specific console. So that's it for this guys and I'll catch you in the next.